What's the cruelest prank you've ever seen? Friend of mine had a crush on his coworker. It was sort of an open secret. His manager tried to help him, offered advice, some things to say, small gifts she might be into, etc. What no one knew at the time was that said manager and said coworker had recently started dating and hadn't told anyone yet. So he meant it as a prank on his new girlfriend to be put into these awkward situations. But my friend's feelings were really hurt when it all came out. A group of girls at my high school told a girl that they were hanging out at one of their houses at nine near a train station. But they really just made up a time and place that would make her stranded at the last train stop with no more trains home. In middle school a girl came up to us on the playground and told this dude to go see the principal. He's looking for you he got a call that your mom died. Then as soon as the dude ran away she told us all she just made it up. It was fucking horrible. I feel like the girl wouldn't have a lot of friends after this. A friend of a friend in high school had her boyfriend pretend that he'd died. He had one of his friends call her saying he had died in a car accident and had someone else calling up pretending to be a doctor from the hospital. She was hysterical. Later that day, after she kept asking the fake doctor which hospital it was so she could be there, she found out it was all prank to see if she cared. Horrible. Anyway, they broke up. To this day it's the nastiest prank I've seen in person. Prank war going on in between two houses that were next to each other in San Diego, California circa 2014. My cousin lived in one of the houses and this happened when I went to visit him a few years back. House number one pulled a prank that led to a member in house number two being late for his first day of work. It was collateral damage, but the guy ended up getting fired for it. Guy who lost his job came home furious. He then took a 15-pound medicine ball and painted it to look just like a soccer ball that he tossed the medicine ball into the front yard of house number one and waited. When he saw the guy come out of the house he yells, Hey Josh, can you kick that ball back over here? Dude proceeds to take a running start and square up and kick the soccer ball with every ounce of strength he had. Poor bastard went down almost immediately in tears and screaming. Ended up breaking three bones in his right foot. Just brutal. My ex-friend thought it was a funny prank to kill my brother's hamster and tie it up and dress it in ridiculous ways. When I was a kid, somehow my classmates found it funny to piss in other people's cans of soda. I did not have a good childhood. I was once prank called by someone, a classmate presumably, and they told me they were going to kill my best friend who was in the same class as me. It was really fucking weird, the school never figured out who it was, they just asked if my friend had any enemies. Bro, we are 11. To be honest, I had far more enemies at 11 than I do as an adult. Kids are a-holes sometimes. In 6th grade, I opened my locker and a note from the boy I had a crush on fell out saying he liked me too. A bunch of girls in my grade were there when I found it and were super happy for me, or I thought they were. When I went to the boy to ask him about it, he said he didn't write it and the group of girls who were there when I found the note had written it. I turned around and sure enough they're laughing. But it crushed me, not that the boy didn't like me back but because I didn't think these girls I'd gone to school with since first grade were that mean. A couple weeks later the group played a similar joke on one of the girls who was actually in on the prank against me, and I got a genuine apology from her after she realized how bad I must have felt. None of the other girls ever apologized. In high school, someone made a pipe bomb and sneakily threw it into a metal trash can. One of my friends unknowingly walked by when it exploded and blew out his eardrum. The trash can looked like a peeled banana afterward. That person was ratted out and expelled. Kid was arrested afterwards. Saw him ten years later working at a car wash. All of this happened in 1997. I have no idea what radio station this was on as I was only a kid, but they used to do prank phone calls. I have little to no recollection of many of them except this one as even as a kid I could tell it was just wrong. The radio host rang up a woman and advised that he was the manager of her husband's company, and he was very sorry to tell her that he had been involved in an accident with some heavy machinery, and it had resulted in his death. As you would expect the woman was beside herself with being told her husband had just died, she was wailing on the phone and the radio host couldn't really get another word in to explain it was a joke, and then they just cut off the phone call and played a song. Even as a kid I knew it was a really stupid and cruel idea, and I'm pretty sure that was the last time they did a prank phone call. 
seen a video of two small girls. One told the other to look at the doorknob really close as it distorts your face. She then slammed the door right into her face hitting her teeth. The first time I met my brother's new girlfriend she pulled me aside and started crying. She told me that she was pregnant but my brother wasn't ready to tell anyone. She asked me to check up on him cause he was really nervous. A couple days go by and I texted her to see how she was doing and if my brother was doing okay and if they needed anything. She asked me what I was talking about. I said the baby. She replied. Oh, you believed me. I was only joking. I'm not pregnant. I can't believe you fell for that. This wasn't some teenager either. She was 30. Yes, I told my brother. Yes, he still ended up marrying her. Almost 10 years later I still refused to trust her. When I was 17, my parents moved the family a couple of states away. I broke up with my then girlfriend because at 17 you don't really do the long distance thing. A week after we got settled into our new house, my then ex-girlfriend called me and said that she was pregnant. It was plausible, we had had, going away and never seeing you again, sex, but unlikely I had worn a condom. So I believed her and rode Greyhound buses for 36 hours to go back and be with her, whatever the outcome might be. And being young and stupid I proposed. Her parents took me in, reluctantly, which is understandable. My then XX girlfriend and I moved into their finished basement apartment in preparation for the blessed event. A couple of weeks later, she refused to have anyone go with her to her pregnancy doctor. A week later, she didn't want to have sex for a whole week. A week or so after that, her mom started asking why she wasn't showing at all, why there were no doctor bills, etc. Then it all came out. She had been lying to get me to come back and be with her. Angry words were exchanged. We rebroke up. Oddly enough, her parents took my side and were super kind to me. They kicked my now XXX girlfriend upstairs to her own room for a week and let me stay in their basement while we worked things out. And when it was painfully obvious that there would be no wedding, they bought me an airline ticket home. Killing a farmer's cow as some sick joke. The cow was not a meat cow either it was the farmer's beloved pet, and he pet it, and fed it, and played with a friendly cow each and every day. The farmer sued the kids who killed the cow, and he won 70k and 20k for emotional upset. Stay winning kings. The cow was an old bull. It was the most friendly cow I have ever seen. It was not even neutered and had really big horns and loved sitting next to the farmer and just grazed next to him. Edit. The kids did not necessarily kill the cow, but forced the old bull to walk upstairs. Cows can walk upstairs, but their anatomy is not built for it, and it's extremely painful for them to do so. The old bull broke its front left leg and bellowed in pain for ten minutes. The farmer had no choice but to shoot and kill his own pet that he has had for the last eight years right then and there on the stairs. The kids pled not guilty in court but they were forced to pay for it all. Imagine some kids coming into your yard where your dog was just chilling and killing him. Not even them killing him. Imagine the kids forcing him to do physical activity which causes an injury that can't be fixed and is horribly painful so you have to put him down. God, that'd destroy me. I put meatballs in the chute for the ice maker so when my roommate went to get some ice his glass filled up with meatballs. I laughed until I realized that meant the further ice would taste like meatballs as well. I don't have a specific example in my life, but I've always thought those fake lottery tickets are cruel. Those people think their life is going to change, and then it's all yanked away from them while people laugh. Same energy as when a parent gifts their kids something in the box for an iPad switch something expensive and fancy. But it's really something shitty and lame inside. The entire joke is, Ha ha, you thought your dreams were coming true, but then they didn't. Look at us, a bunch of kidders, to toy with your emotions like that. I'm friends with a couple where the husband did the fake winner ticket thing to his wife. Then three years later she quietly replaced the real tickets he put in her stocking with her own fake winner tickets, scratched them off I and ripped up a $50,000 winner in front of him claiming he must be playing that stupid joke on her again. He panicked bad, grabbed the pieces of the tickets, put them back together, saw it was a winner and proceeded to freak out, went on to Google, researched if ripped up lottery tickets could be redeemed, basically cried. She let it run to the absolute end where he went to call some number on the back and saw the novelty text. I may have the conducted the most cruel prank without even meaning to.
while in high school once a month or so there was a half day on a Friday. It was posted and scheduled in advance. My friend and I liked to remind each other in the halls loudly that it was half day when it wasn't the right week. People would get excited and happy then after lunch they'd see me and remind me that I was an a-hole for getting their hopes up. Priceless and a harmless prank. One week we did this and I guess the right people overheard. A few kids' parents were bus drivers. They called their parents to remind them it was a half day. Somehow it snowballed and at 11.30 buses had parked out front of every school in the district and they had to cancel the other half of the day because the bus service drivers were pissed to find out they had to cancel their plans for no reason. Principal called me and my friend to the office and said he knows it's our fault, but no one fact-checked it and so it wasn't really our fault. He smiled and sent us on our way to enjoy our half day. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.